Spirituality of Jesus Part 9 The Gentiles All non-Jews were called Gentiles they included the Samaritans the Greeks the Romans and all the others who were not considered God's people If you see here Jesus's prayer uh, experience with Abba Father and uh, with the help of the Holy Spirit ascends to the mountain and then descends back to the community to help his disciples the poor and the gentiles Lucan gospel gives a lot of emphasis to the gentiles for example a light to lighten the gentile glory of thy people Israel is Luke 232 Simeon song Gentiles are the wild olive branch who receive life by being grafted into the olive tree the tree itself represent the covenant and the promise god gave to Israel rooted in the messiah Jesus Christ and fed by the sap which represents the holy spirit who gave life both to the jews and the gentiles The covenants which were made is the first covenant was Noahic covenant which was made with the gentiles Abrahamic uh, Sinai covenant the Palestinian covenant the Davidic covenant made with Jews whereas the new covenant partakes of roots and the fatness of the olive tree is made with the church and this new covenant is with Israel and Judah for the new kingdom to come Gentiles were considered pagan sun pure people because they did many abominations like a uh, make their sons and daughters pass through fire use divination observers of time enchantment witches charmers consultors with familiar spirit wizards and the necromancers they had lot of immorality filthiness of the heathens poetry and polygamy is uh, immorality lasciviousness uh, to work all uh, uncleanness they walked uh, unclear paths and lot of vanity of minds and were full of uh, themselves and ways of the world they were more of animal instincts presence of an object at home anything one's life uh, was considered as god the gospel writer luke himself was a greek doctor who was a gentile and he has uh, showing jesus as a compassionate savior for all the infancy narrative sermon on the plain signs of god's presence lessons of the holy spirit is a christian message for all He also writes the acts of the apostles the gentiles in the life of jesus jesus first encounter with the gentiles is when he is visited by the magi from the east when he was a toddler it is interesting this is a gospel of matthew who writes for a jewish audience and is the only one who includes the visits of the magi presumably pagan gentiles were traveled hundreds of miles to worship this king of jews with this visit matthew foreshadows the theme of the gentiles positive response to jesus's ministry Jesus's first recorded encounter with Gentile during his ministry was with the Roman centurion with who had a lot of people under him and he heals his servant in Matthew 8:11 Jesus stated that in heaven many gentiles will dine together with Abraham Isaac and Jacob as mentioned earlier Jews and Gentiles didn't dine together yet this is Jesus vision when Gentiles would also partake with Jewish patriarchs Jesus is saying that in the near future all people will be people of God The inclusion of gentiles was an old testament theme that often jews ignored the statement of gentile inclusion anticipated that his disciples the future gentile mission that would be given go therefore to the world and make disciples of all men this centurion tells jesus that you don't have to come to my field you say the word and my slave would be healed so he is shown like an idol gentile who loves and sacrifices for those who are racially and ethnically different from him he freely crosses over ethnic lines The message for Luke's uh, gentile readers is that you need to love your Jewish brethren the same way as the centurion. Another difference between the two accounts is that in Luke Jesus has already an en route to his home where the centurion's friends intercepted here. And in Luke's uh, Jesus showed no hesitancy to cross his uh, racial lines. Jesus's action demonstrated that in his ministry racial barriers have been removed. Jesus goes to a gentile town in the Decapolis where there is a demoniac and he heals him he feels no compunction uh, for doing this uh, ministry in the unclean lands where there were pigs and the evil spirit go into the pigs and even entering the tomb where the uh, demoniac legion was sitting the stories include all three synoptic gospel minor differences in matthew's gospel there are two demonics all three gospels have give the impression that jesus sole purpose for traveling into a gentile area was to heal the demonic because the moment he stepped out of the boat he uh, he appears and when jesus had stepped out of the immediately he met the man from the tombs with an unclean spirit jesus also has theological debates with a group of jewish leaders this encounters include all three synoptic some scribes and pharisees have left jerusalem to inspect jesus's ministry in galilee they asked jesus why his disciple not washing their hands before they ate 
violating a Jewish purity ritual. Instead of responding to this question, Jesus told them not what a person eats that defiles him, but what comes out of his mouth that defiles him. So he sets new standards of impurity. In another Gentile town, he meets the Syrophoenician woman who begs Jesus to heal her daughter who is severely possessed by a demon. Jesus obviously knows his reputation as a Jewish healer and ignores her pleas until the moment his disciples, irritated by the woman, ask him to send her away for she is crying after us. And Jesus already healed several Gentiles and he made trips to Gentile territory to expel the demons over there. But here in this ironic overstatement to a Gentile, where he says that not good to give the bread of the children to the dogs. Dogs was an animal that was considered unclean to the Jews. And it, yet uh, she says that uh, dogs can eat the crumbs of the children. No doubt Jesus is testing her faith and he praises her great faith. Jesus returns to Israel, the view held by most Bible scholars that Jesus continued his ministry among the Gentiles. He attracts a lot of crowd, but several days of being with Jesus, crowd is hungry. According to Mark, it was here in Decapolis region where Jesus fed 4,000. In Mark, Jesus fed 5,000 Jews and later 4,000 Gentiles. Both these miracles motivated Jesus' compassion undoubtedly in the case, and he wished to demonstrate his compassion even to the Gentile for the benefits of his disciples. One wonders, when it may have uh, dawned on his disciples that Jesus had no any obligations or uh, qualms with breaking bread with Gentiles. By Jesus' words and deeds, he demonstrated that racial reconciliation should be alike for Jews and Gentiles. These prophetic encounters of Jesus with the Gentiles not only anticipate a future where Gentiles would be part of the mission, also prepared the disciples for breaking bread with the Gentiles. For Jesus thought that the Gentiles in a positive response to the gospel meant they accepted by God. This would prepare them for the day when Gentiles would be included in the church without converting to Judaism. With Jesus' dialogue and acts of compassion towards a hated Gentile soldier, Gentile demonic outcast, Gentile women who made her, herself a nuisance and healing a mute and feeding the 4,000 Gentiles, Jesus models love and compassion that transcends races. In the Gospel of Luke, compassion of Jesus for those in the fringes of society like the lepers, the women, the poor and the Gentiles. This universal implication of the gospel are thus in view from the very earlier stages of Luke's first account of the orderly account which continues in the later scenes as Gentiles come from Tyre and Sidon to listen to Jesus, Gentile century exhibit great faith and show sympathy for the dying Jesus at the cross. The universal implication of Gentiles converting into Christianity that Jesus wanted to show that Gentiles and Jews are part of Jesus' in-group. An emphasis on the treatment of Gentile women and the poor and his compassion and forgiveness for outcasts and sinners. Luke's narrative is primarily for the Gentiles and we have the following evidences. Luke frequently explains Jewish uh, localities. This would be unnecessary was writing to Jews. Luke traces Jesus' genealogy all the way back to Adam, not to Abraham as seen in Matthew's Gospel. This implication is Jesus is represented as for all humanity rather than just Israel. Luke is referring to Roman emperors in designating the dates of Jesus' birth and of John the Baptist's preaching. Luke uses a number of words which would be more familiar to Gentile readers than to the comparable uh, Jewish terms followed in the Matthew's Gospel. Example, Jew Luke uses the Septuagint, that is the Greek version of the canon when quoting from the Old Testament. He has relatively few direct, direct uh, quotations through the, though the book is filled with allusions. So the quotation references are the following. Little is said about Jesus' prophecies because they were not nearly so important to Gentile readers as they were for Jewish readers. In fact, Luke has only five direct references to fulfillment of prophecy and only one, three, four are found in the teaching of Jesus to Israel. Luke is emphasizing a universal message of gospel more than the other gospel writers. He often uh, talks about sinners, poor, outcasts from Jewish society, often refers to Gentiles who shared in the blessings of the Messiah. Samaritans were represented coming to the faith in the Messiah. Jesus and the Samaritan woman uh, episode in John 4 verse 1 to 42 is a very unique episode. It can be a prayer experience, it can be a call narrative and evangelization or a conversion repentance case. This can have diverse interpretations. We see that Jesus does not go purposefully to the Gentile, but that they approach. He has no restrictions. There are people outside the covenant, the Gentiles, the Samaritans, etc. Jesus approaches the, them to manifest that he respects all people. God's love is all embracing. He is very straight and clear in his correction. There is no compromise. He appreciates their good qualities and he transcends the old covenant. 
this samaritan woman episode is important for us in the indian context because we live in different cultures and we need a broad minded openness we see from from the covenant point of view the leaven, language that is used is of covenant like marriage husband water jesus who is god ratifies the old covenant the well the water the meeting place of the old covenant is the place where eliza meets rebecca jacob meets leah and rachel moses meets jethro and his daughters near the well it is a marriage encounter between god and israel between the new israel now and jesus the openness of jesus readiness to give he is free of all prejudice he could have avoided her as a jew and a man he does go beyond and sees her as a sister and a human being he makes a strange request for what actually he wants to give her the resource within him the experience of god the life of joy and peace it is an invitation to partake in this spiritual resource and move to a higher level in god experience and life of the spirit he makes her understand the purpose of her existence and the thirst for god and not physical food but fulfillment of all desires being open to god this is not easy but purification path where she has to give up all the idols and the gods of her passions and husbands the neededness of single minded total hearted radical revolution be transparent before god and face yourself this message is a manifestation of god's love for all people there are no restrictions when god approaches us there is all openness and uh, we have to see meta communication not only description it is jesus coming to gentile world with a broad mind intercultural uh, context not closed but no condemnation but uh, only convictions and values to transform these people and their situations for god is faithful and open to all people so this uh, episode can be seen from the perspective of jesus and the woman and jesus and the disciple who interpreted just mere conversation and revealed the meaning of actions or it can be message from an encounter from a new community that is formed by the woman it can have different uh, context for different people jesus rectifies the old covenant and encounter of god and his people firstly the well is a meeting place and encounter with god like the different uh, couples in the old testament meet god near the well Jesus now meets the new Israel at the well. Secondly, Jesus has openness of personality with no prejudice. He is ready to give what he has. He does not avoid as a man or a Jew and he is very free without any prejudice. He approaches her as a person. Thirdly, he invites her to partake in the spiritual resource, in the water that he can give. To move from her present state to a new state, he gives her valuable resource, unique resource, experience the joy of the life of God and the peace. It is an invitation and inner freedom and anointing that he is come to give her free from the state of sin meet her and move her to the higher level where god himself is present the living water which will quench her thirst if he rejects uh, god the source of life you will have only leaky cisterns next uh, the fourth leave you have to understand her thirst for god he makes her understand that she needs god not physical food and drink you can bring her to that level where all desire will be fulfilled by openness to god next he makes a uh, understand the need for purification there are some conditions which you cannot compromise you have to be open and faithful to the value and move towards this radical revolution you have to face and confront the situation and bring orientation reorientation and face yourself become transparent before god this is a sense of the new covenant there can be no idols no husbands only one god no horses you cannot trust uh, like as assyria had trusted horses and their work of their hands you have to have single minded undivided focus and get rid of all resistance she recognizes him as a prophet because you cannot hide anything from the presence of god she sees sincere and transparent he is strict with his demands but loving in his uh, approach there's no judgment in the demand no prejudice no poking at the past but well being and a goal that uh, she responds to next he asks her to learn the spiritual matters and matters of worship with god she needs say there no blocking no criticism but there's only love and he redirects her from uh, unimportant questions of where to worship on the mountain or in jerusalem to important matters how to worship he refocuses the question and the challenge to move from the place to the manner of worship so he worships in spirit and truth this is the new disposition there is no compulsion you're free god is leading you accept this new revelation through jesus christ his spirit and a new relation with faith and worship of god so now she can accept the new revelation she renounces her jug 
the essential instrument of her daily life to draw water she is now uh, converted she gets a new experience that he is the messiah she does not require the jug the past with her brokenness she is very spontaneous with jesus and his openness now it is time for her to go back to the village and her community she came alone this afternoon she began alone but separated from the community but jesus spirituality brings her back in communion with herself with god and the community there is a new relationship with the people a new value a new meaning no fear inhibitions before the villagers she is not afraid of her vices there is no prejudice the faith sharing of what she has experienced through jesus the interpretation of the disciples is the disciples interpret that jesus has already eaten then they come back and he's not wanting to eat more food but for jesus the food is the will of the father the food of jesus his sustenance is the relationship with his father to continue the mission of the church the harvest not only relationship with the father but missionary work identified with father's team and continued it with his followers this is the horizontal dimension of the cross and the vertical dimension of the cross the woman becomes a missionary and founds a new community of believers in the samaritan village it's a living model how god rely reliance can work in our lives to make us active missionaries self sacrificing and uh, working with uh, jesus through jesus under the fatherhood of god and becoming missionaries to others so who jesus is for us what is our relationship with the father what is our community relationship is very important so does jesus is the messiah for the gentiles especially the samaritans the samaritan woman can be considered a religious woman because she requested jesus provide her with living water she perceived jesus to be a prophet she even inquired about the proper place to worship which was a confusion at that time for the samaritans and the jews she possessed the knowledge of a coming messiah from the scripture thora In the Bible Peter Andrew James John left their nets and father to follow Jesus Levi left his office to follow Jesus So in the same way the Samaritan who left her jug because now she was in one mind with Christ she left the original purpose of why she had come to the well no matter what and now she was converted to live a new life what and who are you willing to leave to follow jesus we need to learn to know who jesus really is in order to have proper faith jesus had a sense of purpose in going to the jacob's well knowing he would have opportunity to engage with this woman he saw the opportunity to tell others what jesus really offers us talk to those in the whom others even maybe brethren will not speak to realize the need to deal with sin and address it the fields are already full of harvest faith can be instilled by learning from others but there comes a point where we must get to know jesus ourselves through prayer and the study of his word in this episode jesus strategy starts with the human need and then takes a metaphor to teach about salvation he spoke of a tangible need and moved to spiritual needs tangible needs would be bread light breath moving to spiritual needs like spiritual water Jesus has a cure for the sin problem why would sharing your own testimony how Jesus forgave your sin ease the transition into confronting sin how did the samaritan woman respond to Jesus's statement about her situation why is it important to continue to bring people's focus back on Jesus rather than trying to debate all other side track issues there is a phrase truth is more caught than thought people will respond to the gospel when we live it before them Pray that Jesus' love and kindness will be demonstrated in your life. Look for ways to help, encourage and meet the needs of people around you. The Samaritan Woman episode deals with core issues of life through worship, eternal life and who Jesus is despite being an outcast of woman and a Samaritan and a sinner. Another important takeaway is seeing how the in the gospel and then in the acts of the apostles The message of the gospel traveled and thrived in Samaria. The gospel of Jesus was re- received by the Gentiles. Most believers today and throughout history are from the nations who are Gentiles. Main purpose and mission of Jesus was restore Israel. There were three significant concepts: the herald of salvation, reign of God, and restoration, redemption of Israel. Jesus pursues this in his ministry. The temple cleansing attitude was the law. table fellowship with sinners and outcasts and gentiles observance of purity laws choosing 12 disciples the thirst of the woman five husbands which she gave up was a material thirst whereas the quest for god is god's love is spiritual thirst and jesus will give us that water which will spring up to eternal life 
our relationship with god is personal and he relates he is not in a building but he is uh, invited uh, deep within us and have an honest and transparent relationship with him. god really relates to us through his word he lives among us and relates to the community he loves us dearly and uh, relates to us in our daily life experiences how can the spring of water welling up to eternal life occur only when we receive god's love and effectively love others and our neighbor these are the two important commandments jesus gives us then we can harvest a life of reward after this episode of the samaritan jew reunion of those who believed in jesus jesus is impending death would finally break the dividing wall of hostility between the jews and the gentiles the curtains of the holy of holy signifying the heavenly abode of the father was finally torn apart and jesus uh, allows us to enter into god's presence so now there is neither jew nor gentile slave nor free male nor female everyone is one in christ everyone belongs to christ then we are abraham's seed and heirs according to god's purpose christ brings through freedom only freedom can man direct himself towards goodness our contemporaries make much of this freedom and pursue it eagerly and surely but uh, you need to know freedom does not give us license to do whatever we want even evil authentic freedom is exceptional sign of divine image within man for god has will that man be left in the hand of his own counsel he has given free will to act spontaneously and freely to attain blissful perfection through loyalty to him Freedom is not license to do anything I want even if it is evil nobody or no nothing can dictate me having no limitations and responsibilities when i have all endless fun and excitement freedom is truly realized when a person does what is good and always move towards goodness whether social or relational has a moral limit welfare of others and a sign of a divine image within the person authentic freedom is choosing to do what is good obstacle to freedom interior could be ignorance passions fears guilt defects uh, bad habits prejudices psychological emotional disturbances exterior obstacle violence threats of violence economic instability financial crisis social pressures political or cultural influences etc freedom for according to cfc is the power to work towards fulfillment to which our nature is ordained to which christ invites us full life in his kingdom freedom for growing as full persons and children of god sharing in the life of christ is the freedom found in authentic love freedom is twofold freedom from is a deliverance from anything and everything that hinders us from doing good and developing the true self and freedom for is a power to work towards fulfillment to which our nature is ordered and to which christ invites us to have full life in his kingdom only those who accept jesus as in case of samaritan will purify their lives and fulfill their moral obligations can have authentic freedom freedom truly exercise in choosing and pursuing moral good therefore we have to be images of a god and made in his li- likeness responsible for our own acts and free actions which gradually shape our life and become more like christ like and follow him another important gentile episode is the healing of the daughter the syrophenician or canaanite woman Actually this has a lot of focus about faith issues. Jesus clearly tells he comes to the lost sheep of Israel. He shows a lot of indifference to her. Yet he has deep concern for he wants to test her faith and her relationship with God. He appreciates openness to all and he is free. He is faithful to the father and the covenant relationship. He is not unwilling to help. Here he wants to give a message to the other people, his disciples especially. Even Jesus in his ministry was a messiah first to the Jews but they were unfaithful to the word so he has to go to the gentiles the Jews are freely given there's a election of the Jews the aim of the Jews was to be a sacrament to save all not exclude any similarly our christian life is not a privilege but a sacrament a sign and a meaning of life to be open to all you have to go to all the peripheries and save people god's faithfulness is to Israel but after resurrection God freed Israel and also chose a new covenant of people for himself so the disciples want to get this woman of great faith has a great uh, trust and perseverance and she keeps on pressing for her needs to be met and Jesus says the bread of the children not given to dogs but she say that the dogs have the right to the crumbs so she is ready to accept even the meager things that she can get from the table So Jesus is challenging her and she sees a uncompromised faith. The dogs was a term that was very a bad and was considered unclean. Yet she does not take the offense and she is ready to bring out the best in her even when provoked. So she is a witness to others and she gets a proactive response from Jesus. Her child is healed. 
the quality of our faith is revealed only when we are in challenges we cannot have superficial relationship with god we need depth and inner quality of our faith does an outsider has a better faith response than the jews important aspect of this woman is she's bowing in worship and calling jesus as god the woman kneels before him and recognizes his authority and the throne of david but uh, she also responds to his uh, second reiteration of the mission of the lost sheep of the house of israel he even likens her status as uh, gentile to the status of small pet dogs of the house yet she accepts it and turns it in her favor her words demonstrate that the boundary separating her from the house of israel must be reconsidered with a faith so pure how can she be deemed unclean The encounter of the Canaanite woman prepares the reader for Jesus's great commission to go and proclaim and make disciples of all the world in Matthew 28:20. This passage is the more about our faith in the world. Life is difficult and deep abiding faith is a real struggle. The world is broken and divided into children and dogs. Sometimes we have the children days, sometimes we have dog days of life where we continue to show up and that's enough. God may or may not do what we want it doesn't really matter to not show up is to only deepen the divide between us and God and break the relationship with God to turn away means we won't be able to be and have uh, God acting in our lives we will miss it we will miss the moment of healing the words of forgiveness the acts that will transform us we will never know when Jesus uh, really will work in our lives but we should know that he really loves us no matter what the canaanite woman's prayers can be a most perfect example of how we should approach god she acknowledged her depravity her acceptance that she's no better than a dog she acknowledged the lord's sovereignty knew that the master determines who eats from the table she acknowledged his conditions knew the bread was for the children not for the dogs and she acknowledged his absolute power she knew that even a crumb contained enough power to do the job of healing her daughter in the darkness of our life we are uh, not free from our own demons and passions like the canaanite woman's faith we have to start getting it to god but it will be automatic effect to becoming one with god the freedom from these demons uh, though it be like crumbs compared to the unique event of our ontological union with christ we have been called to become sons of god one with christ and through born children and participants of the mystical body but are we happy with the crumbs that we get from god's table many times the things we ask the financial and the health and the other things they are small crumbs compared to what god wants to give us Jesus was Christ and uh, he is a uh, god as well as human he died on the cross for us and wants us to be god like to become one with him our presence alone to be able to perform miracles the presence of Jesus inside us to be able to spiritually feed multitudes of people from his riches and his grace when we have correct and strong faith god does not only feed us he makes us rulers of egypt like joseph so that we can feed millions of hungry souls This story is a story of a mother's love. The Syrophoenician woman was willing to do whatever it took even if it meant rejection and humiliation to save her suffering child. Just as Jesus in a short time later would suffer rejection and humiliation to save us. Jesus reaches out to everyone. The woman who prayed and the child that was healed were both women. Not only were they foreigners, Jesus passed uh, the boundaries of his society and saw their intrinsic value and dignity of children of God. Thus the perseverance of the woman pays. She is humiliated but despite that she turns this uh, repartee into her favor. So whenever in life we are humiliated we should not take offense. Rather we need to learn to turn this for our favor and grow from these experiences. Thus Jesus spirituality is inclusive and includes Gentiles into God's community.